Dave Barry for Rivals.com, joined by publisher of Trojansports.com, Ryan Young, here to break down the biggest news of the day. Clay Helton is out as head coach at USC. Ryan, there have been times over the past couple of seasons where there was talk that USC might let Helton go. Obviously, we had the tough loss on Saturday to Stanford. So I guess the first question is, why now? It just felt inevitable after that loss Saturday. They came in as 17-point favorites to Stanford at home. They're down 29 points in the fourth quarter. And it just had all the hallmarks of what has frustrated fans for years about the Clay Helton tenure. Undisciplined. They had nine penalties for 111 yards. They, they looked to be out coached. They came out flat in a game they should have won. And it was really, it, it wasn't that game. It was just that game represented really the last four years or five years to fans. And you could feel it turning in the fan base where it was going to be very ugly the rest of the season. They, they were booing him and the team in the Coliseum Saturday. And that wasn't going to stop. We've been here before. I mean, it was 2018. It was, it was three years ago when fans uh, rented the plane to fly a banner over the Coliseum imploring former AD Lynn Swan to fire Clay Helton. It was going to get back to those levels. And so if USC knew he wasn't going to come back next year, they had to do it right now. And uh, Athletic Director Mike Bone has been pretty no-nonsense, you know, pretty to-the-point guy. And he's very clear that he wants to compete for championships. He wants to win. He wants to elevate this program. They had done everything to support Clay Helton the last two years. They had more than doubled the size of the recruiting staff. They had changed out the defensive staff. They had uh, given him more support staff in different areas. And ultimately, everything was in place and nothing had really changed. And so you have, you have to make the move ahead, coach. And I'll say this, it's, it's really unparalleled in college football that this is like year four of the Clay Helton hot seat watch. And you know, coaches at programs like this don't get that long of a leash to – to, to keep going when the fan base is, is calling for their job every single year. And I, I think that the timing wasn't right before. Obviously, he got a big contract extension right before the 2018 season from Lynn Swan. And so when they go 5-7 and seven in 2018, it they couldn't make that move right then financially. I mean, they, they had just extended him through the 2023 season, and so they were stuck. Mike Bone comes in at the end of the 2019 season, and, you know, it's an 8-5 and five year worst recruiting year in USC history, and they get blown out in the bowl game. And people were thinking maybe he makes a move right then, but he had just gotten there. He was just establishing himself within the, the USC culture and, uh, you know, kind of forming uh, relationships with the university and the, and the support system. I don't, I don't think he was ready to make that move or uh, still the contract was hanging over it. So now you're a couple of years down the road through that extension and, Financially, it's probably better timing, but ultimately it just had to happen. And so now's the time. Yeah, it's still, you know, it's still kind of interesting timing just after week one when, you know, there's there's no coaches out there really that are looking for a job. So the next question is, you know, about possible replacements. Who are, you know, top three, top five guys that they're looking at that you see as possible replacements for Helton? Yeah, there, there will be a lot of names bantied about here in the next few months. It's going to be a three-month coaching search, so we'll have a lot of names to discuss. I'll give you the two that come to the top of the list. Luke Fickle at Cincinnati. Mike Bone was the former AD at Cincinnati, hired Luke Fickle there. Obviously, he's, he's kind of at the top of the list of those, you know, group of five coaches who are maybe ready for the, the big step up and uh, would come in and pair nicely with what they're building here. And you have to think with the relationships that that conversation is going to at least happen. And if he's ready to make that move, then what better opportunity for him than to go from Cincinnati to USC? And then, you know, Matt Campbell's going to be at the top of every coaching list for jobs that come open this year. He's, he's done wonders at Iowa State. And how long is he going to stay there, especially with the, the Big 12 kind of uh, losing some of its luster here uh, this year with the Texas Oklahoma news? Maybe he sees the time is right to make a move and elevate himself. So I would start with those two names, but we will have a full list on TrojanSports.com uh, with our thoughts on a number of candidates. But those are the two that come to mind first. Yeah, well, we should, we should mention, uh, like I said, it's going to be a, a long coaching search. We do have a 60-day free trial for new subscribers. So you want to go to TrojanSports.com. You'll use the code NEWUSC. We'll put that information along the bottom of the screen here. But that's TrojanSports.com. Use the code NEWUSC and you get 60 days for free, you can follow along with the coaching search. Now, Ryan, uh, one more question in, in terms of recruiting. Right now, USC has two five-stars in the 2022 mm -hmm. class, Michael Williams and Damani Jackson, a lot of four-star guys. 
what sort of impact do you see this having with with those two five stars and other recruits going forward? Well, it's very notable and strategic that they named Dante Williams the interim head coach. Dante Williams is USC's ace recruiter. He's only been here for a couple of years now, but he's really uh, transformed their recruiting in that time. I mean, he came in on, on the heels of that 71st ranked recruiting class in the 2020 cycle and got them into the top 10 in 2021. And for a lot of those key guys, he's the point person. So if he can project that he is a part of the future of this program, and I have to imagine that USC wants Dante Williams here, no matter who the head coach is, um, they're going to want him on staff. He's just a major asset. And so he'll go to work immediately trying to convince recruits, look, you know, we are getting a new head coach, but I'm still here. And, uh, this is still a great place for you. Now, with Damani Jackson, it's interesting because Clay Helton was a really big factor for him. Like he he came out and said, you know, Clay Helton is my favorite coach. I know he gets a lot of uh, flack and backlash, but but he, he's a big deal to me. There's a lot of trust there in that relationship. So that'll be interesting to watch, especially with Michigan and Alabama really coming hard after Damani to try and flip his decision. And then with Michael Williams out in Georgia, whenever you have a commit from a guy from the other side of the country early in the cycle, you're always a little nervous about holding on to it, you know, until signing day. And so that's definitely one where I'd be a little tense about and, and see what happens. Um, I, you know, I know Georgia's making a hard push to keep him home there. And whenever there's uncertainty as to who's going to be leading on the program, it's, it opens a vacuum up for, for teams to come in and sweep those recruits out. So we'll see. But keeping Dante Williams in place is huge for the Trojans because he, re he really is the pulse of their recruiting and he's still here. Yeah. All right. Well, Ryan, I know it's a very busy day for you, so I appreciate you taking the time time to do this. Let's remind everybody one more time that 60 day free trials for new subscribers to Trojansports.com. Go to the website Trojansports.com and use that code NEWUSC to get that uh, free 60 days. Thanks a lot, Ryan. Appreciate it. My pleasure.